I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This is the metallic matte gray, something like that. Single disc here in the front. Let's see here, doing my figure eights. Ignition is on the left hand side right over there. If you want to lock the bike, it's actually right over here on the right side. I'll give you a couple of exhaust revs. Sounds a lot like the CBR500. I mean, it's the same engine, but I think it suits the look of them on the Rebel a little bit more than it does on the CBR. Let's hop on it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Today, I'll be talking about... The newest bike in my list of owned bikes. I just picked up this 2020 Honda Rebel 500. When I was doing research on this bike, most of the videos were on the uh, special edition. People had the press bikes. So I'm really looking forward to bringing a different perspective, you know, actually owning one of these and just kind of sharing my first impressions in this video. Literally picked this thing up just today. And so far, I'm absolutely loving it. If you're familiar with the channel, um, I'm about five foot six, 140 pounds or so. So finding bikes that are a good height for me has always been a bit of a challenge. Um, and at the same time, I've learned in my riding career, although it's only been a couple of years now, and this is my ninth motorcycle, that low displacement is actually something that I desire in a bike because, you know, when it comes to fuel economy and just being practical, getting to work and running errands and things like that, um, that's what I'm primarily using a lot of my bikes for. So, you know, what enticed me about this Rebel 500 is I have been pretty familiar with the CBR 500. I had a 2017 model, so it's the same 471cc parallel twin that Honda has in uh, not only the CBR500, the CB500F, and the CB500X. I mean, right now it looks like I'm averaging about 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers. Just for starters, on my CB500, I was getting around 3.3, so it just might take a bit of time for this to reset to my driving habits. Uh, I don't like rip it on the throttle like crazy or anything like that. This is about 27 inch C height if I recall correctly. As opposed to one of my tallest bikes was the CRF, uh, the Dual Sport. I've had a couple of Groms. I really like the seat height on the Grom. Most of the time just put one foot down anyways, but it's always nice to just have that extra confidence to be able to flat foot or just doing some maneuvers on foot. When it comes to weight, I don't mind too much. Oh, there's a bunch of bikes out. When it comes to weight, this is like 417 around there. Around the same weight as my Yamaha MT-07 and my Ducati Scrambler. With that being said though, the the weight doesn't matter as much to me because with that low C height, this thing feels like it's really easy to maneuver and with that low center of gravity, you don't really feel those uh, that 400 pounds when you're maneuvering this bike. It's still very, very light and flickable and I'm really digging the ergonomic. I did test ride a Triumph Street Twin, the one with the upgrades and the older one. I did find the upgraded model very enjoyable, but overall, you know, I just didn't find myself, when I thought about it, I, I didn't really need that 900cc motor because a lot of the time I'm just riding around in the city, so I don't need a ton of power. And honestly, the center of gravity felt quite high for a 450 pound bike so you know and and the throttle response was just a little bit delayed for my liking i will own a triumph one day but you know my eye is a little bit more set on the street scrambler so i mean just to give you a bit of background that's the bike that i was kind of uh thinking about getting for a long time leading up to this rebel 500 I also looked at the Yamaha Bolt 950cc, but uh, yeah, the Rebel just really stood out to me because of its, you know, the familiarity with the 471cc engine, and it's just a really enjoyable, smooth, easy to maneuver bike with 
2020 they put a lot of upgrades um, so I was looking at some 2019 models you know they had that really nice sand color that came out um, but the biggest thing that you'll notice in the beginning is the headlights so it's not that traditional looking headlight anymore there's uh, four LEDs up here at the front uh, and then all around it is blacked out so I love the way that looks the second biggest uh, thing for me was actually this digital display so I believe on the older Honda Rebels it was just like a little bit of a rectangle within the circle so I just felt like there was a lot of real estate that they were missing out on so this one extends it a little bit more on the bottom here you get the you know the neutral light so with that fuel gauge for longer trips that's going to be really nice and then that gear position indicator you know I know it's a typical Honda thing to not have them and I, I don't really rely on them as you know but when I had that Yamaha MT-07 it just was really nice to just be able to know what gear you're in especially when you do a lot of city riding like I do there is an a tachometer I mean the old one didn't have it and honestly with cruisers I've ridden a Suzuki Boulevard in the past it was a C50 if I recall correctly 800 CC and uh, that one didn't have a tachometer either honestly with cruisers I feel like it's not really a necessity however Honda did add in the 2020 a slipper clutch so you know these downshifts I don't know if I'm actually rev matching properly but it doesn't really matter as much because of this uh, the presence of this slipper clutch it's just so smooth and this clutch is incredibly light I also love that they uh, these aren't just you know the OEM silver typical uh, levers for the brake and the clutch this is actually matte blacked out so I think that looks really clean but uh, at the same time it's just a very smooth and light clutch and I always appreciate that when it comes to city riding this bike is equipped with a shorty I think the GP exhaust if I had the decision I would have a baffle in it the bike is pretty much stock it does have the passenger seat and passenger pegs removed I'll probably be throwing that back on for some two-up riding that's a big reason why I bought this bike um, you know it's not going to be the most powerful bike in the world but just for around the city I think it will be just fine yeah it's got a decent amount of get up and get up and go honestly it's uh I think this this 500 motor is actually just that perfect balance for me the Grom you know it's supposed to be slow so I'm totally fine with that the CB there's a little bit more to be desired for they did upgrade the suspension that was a very big complaint I believe in the previous model so far it feels pretty good I did have to take it over some big bumps the seat I believe was improved as well on the SE you can get that uh, I think it's like diamond stitched seat it looks pretty cool this is not the SE model so I don't have the fork gaiters special seat and then I also don't have the cowling I am planning to get potentially like a dart fly screen maybe blacked out at the front here just like I had on my Ducati scrambler add to the look of the bike but ultimately just get a little bit of wind deflection one thing that I'm really noticing is the ergonomics I come from a lot of naked bikes I had a dual sport at one point but it's always such a huge change to sit on a cruiser because you just feel like you're sitting so much further back on the bike it's more of a natural riding position I, I mean I got about a 90 degree bend in my leg so it feels like I'm just sitting in a chair as a shorter rider I feel like I'm really reaching for these bars maybe just because I'm not used to it I, I scooch forward in the seat here I like to go really far forward so that I can get a little bit more of my feet on the ground and then I can grip the tank with my knees I've learned that this is a little bit more of a comfortable position for me seems to do the job no problem I am getting a little bit of strange vibrations on the front wheel ever so slightly for the most part I feel like I've got I still got a decent amount of juice left in the engine and uh, if I was to shift down using that sh slipper clutch it's, it's not going to be any issue I know this is only 80 kilometers an hour Let's see if I can make this turn though yeah I think I can you know it takes turns pretty nicely I'm surprised because you know for a cruiser that lean angle is very generous it's got a lot of leeway and it handles very like 
it's very flickable and I never thought I would say that about a cruiser. To be fair though, my only comparison is with a 800cc Suzuki Boulevard that my dad owned. But yeah, I'm really digging the ergonomics. It took a little bit of getting used to. One thing that I do notice with the cruisers in particular is where my ankles are, the inner ankles, I notice there's... Let's see what it is. Yeah, so on this bike, it's... On this bike in particular, it's actually the uh, transmission. And just the engine case in general kind of is in a weird position and I can't really tuck my uh, ankles in or my heels in. But it's, I mean, it's not a huge deal. I do have small feet. Maybe that's just my problem. I'm trying to think of if there's anything that's off-putting about this bike. Honestly, I can't think of anything. You know, the Rebel previously was already on its own such a fantastic bike super accessible by beginners you know in riding schools they have a lot of them because of that low seat height because of that smooth power delivery just the improvements that they put on in 2020 really gave honda that unique uh, position in the you know entry level cruiser market in the japanese market there's the bolt by yamaha there's also the vulcan s by Kawasaki with the uh, 650cc. I think the looks of the Rebel just is a huge win for me, especially when compared to the Vulcan. No hate on the Vulcan. I just think for me, the kind of like subtle bobber style look of this Honda Rebel is really enticing for me. But with that being said, when I was comparing it with the Bolt, it was a little bit tricky because the Bolt is pretty much double the engine displacement of this bike. My dad, he's really huge into cruisers and one thing that he always just talked about was how it was just so easy to maintain a belt driven motorcycle. Pretty much all the bikes that I've owned, all nine of them are uh, chain driven. The tricky part is with this Honda, like other cruisers, you'd be able to jack it up from the, the bottom to lift it. But then the other tricky thing is the swing arms make it a little bit difficult to use uh, a rear stand like you would on a sport bike. So I think with this exhaust it actually helps with that. It exposes the other side, the right side of the bike. But if I go ahead and put that uh, stock exhaust back on, I think that will be a lot more difficult unless I add spools. I've been very excited for this bike. This is my first cruiser and I don't think there could be another bike that would be better for me as a first cruiser. The Yamaha Bolt, like I said, has the uh, belt drive, but uh, the weight of it didn't really seem all that appealing. I'm planning to use the, a lot of this in the city, so having that lighter bike would be really nice. But if I d were to choose a highway bike, you know, I would give the Yamaha Bolt a really solid look. Like I said, the modifications I'm planning to do, maybe a windscreen up front, I'm looking for some sort of uh, bag system maybe on the swing arm I've seen some nice ones way on the fork uh, maybe uh, adding a sissy bar in the back a passenger backrest but also uh, a place for me to strap a backpack or, or a bag for those longer trips let me know in the comments what you think of my new bike thanks so much for watching uh, please feel free to like comment subscribe we're trying to build the community here so um, if you have any recommendations for bikes you'd like me to check out or do a review on drop them below and I will try to to get my hands on them so until next time we will see you in the next video ride safe everyone peace so two things that I forgot to mention is I've just gotten so used to bar end mirrors that you know having these is quite refreshing I'm not finding myself like chicken winging 80 or 90 kilometers an hour, these do start to vibrate pretty crazily. Um, so it is a little bit hard to see in that regard. Um, and the other thing is just this uh, shift lever on the left foot here is just one of the smoothest I've ever experienced. I don't know if it's just because it's a relatively new bike, but you know, just comparing it to the 2019 CB300R that I have and both of my Honda Groms, this is just like incredibly smooth. I would have thought the throws would be a little bit longer being a cruiser but combined with this slipper clutch super light anyways like the this shifting on this bike is just fantastic so just wanted to throw that in 
and uh, we'll wrap it up here. Cheers. Low speed maneuvers, uh, I was surprised for a cruiser, it's so easy. Let's see here, doing my figure eights. Yeah, I'll take a little bit of getting used to because of the reach on these bars. But yeah, no, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here.